Um, if you have not done this, if you haven't done it, if you have done it, it's okay. When you came in, you should have seen a, um, a banner that said new here. Did everybody see that? The banner that said new here. So if you haven't done that, which is cool, you, you can still do it. We want you to fill out a connect card. A connect card, it connects you to us. It gives us information so that we can not only be in contact with you. Now, listen, we're not going to hit you up a bunch of times. We might follow up with you because we want you to let you know that we love you. But we ain't going to be hitting you up all day, every day. We just want you to be in the know of what God is doing. And we want to let you know that we care. Because I do not want you being here today to be a transactional moment. I want you to let you know. I want to let you know that if you need community, then you can find it here. And, and, we, and we thank God for you. So listen, um, one quick announcement, and then we're going to get into the word. Well, actually, two. Um, number one, do you all remember the Connect the Dots town hall that we're supposed to be doing at the end of the month? Mm -hmm. Y'all remember that? Did anybody tell you about that? That's what we're going to do. We're going to push it back. And the reason why we're going to push it back is because two reasons. Number one, I want to make sure that it is a curated event and it's not just something that you just want to show up to. Because we're going, to, we're going to have this during the week, and I don't want to waste your time. I want to make sure that it's something that is intentional, that we have all the bells and whistles. We got everything lined up. We know exactly what we are doing, so look out for that in September. And also, I also believe that it's something that I want to minister and teach you into a place to where you can understand it. Because I don't want to give you information, and I have not given you revelation. I want to give you information, but I also want to give you revelation. Because if I just give you information, then it will not stick as well as revelation. But if I give you revelation, then it's the Holy Spirit job to, to download the information that I'm giving you. Amen? Amen. So, so, so we're going to push that back. In, but we're going to have it this month. Okay? We're going to have it this month. I guarantee you we're going to have it this month. And I'm super excited about it. And, I, and what, I, what I want to do, I want to be intentional. I, I, I want you to invite somebody who probably has been skeptical of church, skeptical of ministry, because what we're going to do is we're going to lay out the foundation of our community. We're going to lay out who we are, what we do, and where are we going? What we need to, what we need to do to go to the place where God is calling us to. So that's what we're going to do. Also, please stay tuned at the end of service. Um, I have a very important announcement that's going to kind of um, shape and shift the trajectory of our ministry. We ain't going nowhere else right now. It's just something that we're going to be doing until Jesus comes back. But I'm super, super excited about it. And I want everybody to participate. So, listen. We are in a message compilation entitled Management. Look at your neighbor and say management. management. Not management. I'm tripping. Manage it. Look at your neighbor and say manage it. Manage it. Quick question. Uh, is, is football on today? No. It's not? You know, ain't no games on today? Because football season, I got to start preaching quicker. I can't, I can't preach the same length. I'm for real. Yeah, I'm for real. I'm for real. I want, I, want, I want to get you your word, and you can go cheer. If you're a Panthers fan, go cheer for them. And if you're a Cowboys fan, you need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Because you clearly can't be saved if you're a Dallas Cowboy fan. You clearly don't have a relationship with the Lord. I don't understand how you do that. But anyway, that's none of my business. That's between you and Jesus. This was between you and Jesus. This has nothing to do with me. But anyway, so, um, but for real, I really want to be strategic in that because I want men to still come to church and not worry about they're going to miss the kickoff. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe that spiritual things are before sports, but I think that you should be able to come in, get a word, and then go enjoy your life. Does anybody else agree with that? Yes. You know, I, we, we're not that church where we stay in and we shout and we prophesy for three hours. I'm not. I'm not. Now, y'all can stay here and do that, but I'm going home. Just let you know. Right now, I'm going home. Just let you know. So, we are in a message compilation entitled Manage It. And I believe in this month, as we close this series out, prepare for our next one, I believe that the Spirit of God wants us to examine the principle of before you can maximize a thing, you have to know how to manage it. Mm -hmm. Because the, 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 the problem is, and it's not really a problem, but we have to change our perspective. There's nothing wrong with believing God for the supernatural. But the issue is, a lot of us don't know how to manage the natural, and then we want to believe for the supernatural. Now, don't get me wrong, I believe in the supernatural, but you can't be so spiritual that you're no, that you're no earthly good. You can't be so spiritual that you don't know how to walk on earth. You can't be so deep in the Holy Ghost that you don't know how to manage your life. Come on, sir. Mm -hmm. I believe in spiritual principles. I believe in being led. But you need to know how to manage certain things in your life. Mm -hmm. I can't get no amens. Are y'all okay? Okay, okay. If I, I'll take that one. I'll take that one. So listen, we're going to get into the word today. I'm excited. Um, if we all can, can we all stand as we reverence the word of God today? I want you to go to Hebrews 11, verse 7. Hebrews 11. 
verse 7. Hebrews 11, verse 7. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Hebrews 11, verse 7. Watch me. And the Bible says, I'm coming from the New King James Version. And the Bible says, by faith, Noah. Everybody say Noah. Noah. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear. I'm so glad that we serve a God who will warn you before calamity happens. Oftentimes, we, we, we will say, God, how come you didn't warn me? And it's not that he didn't warn you. You might not have been, a, might not have been at the place where you were listening. Because here's the thing, God is always talking. Me personally, I just don't believe that teaching that God gets silent. I think that God is always talking, but are we always in the position to listen? I, 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 just, I, just, I just believe that. But then watch me, the Bible says in Hebrews 11 about faith, Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household. I want to entitle this sermon... I want, you, I want you to get in your mind the thing that God has called you to do. I want you to get in your mind right now. I don't know what it is. I don't know what your assignment is. I don't know why God put you on this earth, but I need you to figure it out right now. I need you to put it in your head. Do you, you got it? Okay. I need you to put it in your head right now. I need you to keep it there. And, and, and I want to give you a title that, that should help you and, and put you back in the place of, of where God wants you to be in it, when it comes to your assignment. I want to entitle this sermon, Prepare For It. Prepare for it. Look at your neighbor and say, prepare for it. Prepare. No, I need you to find somebody else and say, prepare for it. Prepare. I need you to find somebody else and say, prepare for it. Prepare. I need you to high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Today, today is for you. Is for you. I need you to high five somebody else and say, neighbor, neighbor. Today, today is for you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Prepare for it. Prepare for it. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you and I worship your name today. I thank you for doing only what you can do. God, we thank you for this ministry. We thank you for every first time visitor. We thank you for every person who was here. We thank you that they are not here by accident. But God, I thank you for the word of God that will go forth mightily. It will go forth impactfully. In Jesus name, we all say amen, amen, amen. Before we move forward, can you guys make some noise for my beautiful wife on the front row, please? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Listen, how many people in the room you enjoy cooking? Amen. You enjoy the cook? Like, that's what I'm talking about. There. Listen, if I'm clapping nothing else, listen, how many people not only do you enjoy cooking, but you enjoy cooking for other people? Yes. yes. Okay, okay. Listen, I started cooking about two years ago. About two years ago, like, I, I really started getting into, um, like, the Instagram recipes and things of that nature. Because when you got, back then we had about, we had about two children getting ready to prepare for the third one. And after a while, you get tired of eating Chick-fil-A. So it was like, all right, like, sooner or later, you will have to figure this thing out. So I really started to get into cooking. And I remember two Christmases ago, two Christmases ago, I had the vision of I wanted to cook for my friends who were available that day. So what I wanted to do, Alana, I wanted to, I wanted to cook my macaroni and cheese and fried chicken and, and a, a, a seafood stuffing. And that was good. It was just spicy. It was super good. I had, it was hot with it. That was some hot uh, stuff. It was really good though. I think we had collard greens that day. We had rice. It was a really good meal. It was really, really good. But here is the problem. Here's the problem. That Christmas was so stressful. That Christmas was so aggravating, Alana, because what happened was I invited people over. I had a vision for the meal, but I did not prepare early enough for when the people were supposed to come over. So they came over, they came over, and when they came over, I'm frustrated. I mean, it's flour all over the kitchen. I'm sweating. I'm hot. My wife comes in. She's laughing at me because she knows, yeah, this fool just started late. So she comes in and she's trying to help me. I'm insecure about the texture of the fried chicken because even though I know it's seasoned, it still look a little bit too dark. You haven't seen chicken look a little bit too dark? It don't mean that it ain't done. It just look a little bit too dark. So I'm nervous. I'm sweating. And all of my friends are like, man, just calm down. And I'm like, no, I wanted this thing to be good. Now, the food was good, but John, I was so stressed out that I could not enjoy the day. But if I would have just prepared properly, then I would have been able to enjoy the thing that I envisioned. Teach, sir. What if I tell you that your lack of preparation is due to you under?
you're estimating the size of your future. What if I told you that for some of you, it is hard for you to prepare for later because you cannot see what God is preparing you for today. And, 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 and here's the deal. What you have to understand is, is that the place that God is taking you is already prepared. The place that God is taking you yes. is already secure. But one thing you have to understand that if you don't know how to manage preparation, how can you manage the blessing? And the problem with most believers, the problem with most believers is, is that we want to believe God for this huge future, but we don't know how to manage the now. And let me be clear. God is not holding you back, but he's building you forward. Amen. But God loves you so much. He loves you so much that he's not going to send you into the right place at the wrong time. Amen. The issue is not your destiny. The issue is not your purpose. The issue is not the thing that you are believing God for. The question is, are you prepared for it? And I believe that God has a word for us today, and we're going to learn from this guy named Noah. Everybody ever heard of this guy named Noah? Yeah. Now, most likely when you hear Noah, you hear about him in children's ministry. They always talk about Noah and the ark. But the Bible says, let me give you context for this story. The Bible says in Genesis 6, 6 through 8, and the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth. Listen to this. And he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing, birds of the air. For I am sorry that I have ever made them. The problem with the earth at that time, let me give you context. Now, you're going to have to go and watch this on YouTube. You're going to have to do research. But if you go a few verses up, if you go a few verses back, the Bible says that women during that time were sleeping with the sons of God. Has anybody ever read that? Let me give you context. So in that time, now here, now if you don't believe me, you can do your own research. During that time, there were angels, fallen angels who had come down on earth. They had fallen from heaven. Now let me be, here's the thing, I gotta give you history. I know this might be boring. Okay, remember in the word of God when Jesus said, I beheld Satan falling as lightning? Okay, so when Satan was kicked out of, the, kicked out of heaven, the Bible says that a third of the angels fell with him. Okay, I ain't got time to go into this teaching. But fallen angels had fallen angels had come on the earth. And the fallen angels had begun to sleep with the women. Okay. So when the fallen angels had slept with the women, it created giants in the land. When it created giants in the land, the DNA of man became corrupt. So God said there's so much sin in the land, they doing perverse things. They doing things that I would never imagine them because watch me, sin is a result of Adam and Eve. But then watch me, sin progressed and it began to take its own shape and form in man's idea. Watch me, sin was already in man, but the ideas of man became progressive. So what happened was sin was already in man, but they became more creative with the sin they was doing. So they figuring out different sins they can participate in. So God is like, hey, listen, listen, watch me. Now, mind you, this is before Jesus. Jesus didn't die yet. So watch me. So God is saying, hey, I'm going to destroy it, and I'm going to start over. Watch me. But the Bible says this. In the midst of a perverse generation, the Bible says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Come on. Now, now, think about that. I need you to think about what it's like when everybody is doing the opposite of what God said, doing the exact opposite of righteousness, but you're the only one, which lets me know that Noah had to be focused. Noah had to be focused in the midst of distractions. Can I tell you something? One of the main keys of preparation is that you need a level of focus so that you can get to the place where God is trying to take you. When you are easily distracted, you are easily destructible. When you are easily distracted, you are easily destructible. There is a problem where you can spend hours on TikTok, but you can't listen to a 30-minute sermon. It is a problem when you don't have an issue going out to the lounge with your homegirls and y'all say y'all all all times and hours of the night, praise God, but you can't get your tail up and come to church the next morning. There is a problem where you can watch a Netflix series all day, but you cannot spend time reading a book for 30 minutes. I'm not teaching condemnation. I'm not teaching legalism. If you don't want to come to church, you're still saved. If you don't read books, you're still saved. If you don't invest in your future, you're still saved. But guess what? God loves you too much to keep you where you are. And we live in a generation that is easily distracted. 
We are easily distracted. If you want to, if you want to get to the place where God is taking you, it's going to take. Look at your neighbor and say, "Focus." focus. But I love this because the Bible says, "But Noah found grace." Yeah. I love this. I love this because if you look up the word Noah in the Hebrew, that word Noah means rest. Yeah. So watch me. Rest found grace in the eyes of the Lord. There are some of you, you are preparing and you are frustrated. You are preparing and you are anxious. You are, pre you are preparing and you are aggravated. Whatever God told you to prepare, you need to do it from a place of rest. Because you are not preparing for something that's incomplete. The Bible says in Philippians 1 that he who began a good work is going to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. I'm not prepared for something that's incomplete. I'm not prepared for something that's unfinished. I'm prepared for something that's already done. The purpose place is not the problem. The problem is me. Am I prepared for the thing that I'm believing God for? Because what we do in the body of Christ is we believe God for these amazing dreams, but you have no natural development in order to handle it. Come on, sir. Listen, I want everybody dreams in here to come true. I want you to live in the overflow. I just don't want you to drown in it. I want you to live in abundance. I just don't want the abundance to become a burden. Because it's easy to say, it's listen, 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 listen. It's easy to say you want popularity, but you don't want, but you don't want the other side of it. Because here's the thing, there's, yeah, 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 yeah. there's a backside to a blessing. Yeah. You only see this side. But when you flip it around, you don't see the confrontation that comes with it. Everybody wants to be at a certain place and status. But what happens when your family change on you? Okay. What, what happens when you say, I want to be blessed beyond measure. But then can you handle the criticism of what happens when you get that type of blessing? Can, 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 can you deal with it? So, so, so watch me. So, so you need to be preparing from a place of rest. And then watch me. The Bible says, I love this. The Bible says in Genesis 6. 13 through 14. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make for yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. Now I need you to understand something. Because here's the part of preparation where it gets lonely, where it gets frustrating. Because God is telling Noah to prepare for something that he's never seen. Because, because, because on, on the earth at that time, it had never rained. Because the earth was watered from the ground. So nobody had ever seen rain to that point. So God, you're, you're telling me to prepare a boat? Now let me be clear. The ark was, was the length, according to theologians, was the length of four spaceships. The length of four spaceships. So you want me to build a boat and I ain't never seen rain. What is rain? The only water I know is on the ground. You mean water gonna come from the sky, and you want me to build a boat? Let, let, let me let me put it let me let me let me put it in in terms you understand. God, you want me to take classes and I ain't got no clients. Okay. You, you want me to work on myself when I don't believe that people are looking at me. Okay. You God, you want me to save money when my financial situation has been the same. One of the reasons why it's hard for us to prepare now. It's because you can't see or you can't fathom how God is going to get you to the place that he's promising you. And sometimes that's frustrating because I'm trying to pioneer something that I've never seen. I've never seen generational wealth, but God called me to it. I've never seen anybody in my family have a successful marriage, but God is calling me to it. I came to tell you today that if God is telling you to prepare, it's his job to give you the vision for it. I know you might not have experienced it before. It don't matter if you're the first millionaire in your family. It don't matter if you're the first mother in your family. If God called you to it, he'll anoint you for it. Yes, yeah. Amen. Noah, watch me, was anointed to build. But, 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 but the problem is, the problem is this. The problem is, how do I stay focused? And how do I envision something that nobody else has ever seen? You see, the, the, the hard thing about being a visionary is you have to just trust that God is who he is and that God said what he said and the only thing you can do is just be obedient because watch me if you wait on all the details you'll miss out on the blessing that God has for you so then watch me 
So God gives him instruction. And watch me. Here's another thing you got to understand. This is good. Watch me. When God gives you instruction, instruction is not only for information. It's also for inspiration. When God gives you instruction, it's not only for information. It's also for inspiration. Because sometimes when you're building and when you're building, sometimes you can easily get bored. Okay. Okay. Has anybody ever been preparing something that God told them to do, but because it's not yielding results quickly, you get tired of it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Now, now, now we're here. You know, Rutledge, I was, I was on Instagram the other day, and, and I saw this reel, and this man said, I think he's an Olympic runner. He said, I prepare years. I prepare years. I prepare years to run a nine-second race. I prepare year after year. I've been training since I was a child. I've been training since I was a baby. I've been training for years for a nine-second race. And there are people who give up after two months because you don't see results. Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I ask you something? What if, yes, I call you no, no, so. What if, what if, what if, what if the reason why you are not seeing the results yet it's because God is still developing certain things in you so that, watch me, you won't quit when you see one result. Because you, you, you know how we do. You know, when you start to see the abs develop, that's when you want to stop going to the gym. You know, you know, you know, you know. As soon as you start to see a little definition, you ain't got to lift no more. But watch me, watch me, watch me. But the definition is not an indication to quit. The definition is an indication to keep going. Because if God can do this, what else can he do? Some of you, you give up too quickly just because you saw good things happen. Listen to me. It's good that you see good things, but there's nothing wrong when you see great things. Yes, sir. Don't get distracted by the good thing. You need, you, you need to be going forward to the great things. Stay with me, y'all. We almost through, I promise you. And then watch me. The Bible says in Genesis 6, verse 22, thus Noah, Noah did according to all that God commanded him. I love that. God tells him to build a boat. And the Bible says he just did it. I love this. Because we don't see in the scripture, we don't see in the scripture that God or that Noah had a conversation with God. I love this because we don't see in the scripture, thank you, we don't see in the scripture that Noah took a season to fast to see if God said what he said. Because you know how we do, I'm taking a season of fasting to see if God really said what he said. You know what's amazing? We do things in church that you can't do on your job. I'm taking a season of fasting so I can get myself there. Go tell your job that. Yeah, when, when, okay, so when you, when you take your season of fasting, turn your badge into but you know, I ain't got time to teach that. So, so another thing that I like, I love the fact that Noah, the Bible clearly says he had three sons and he had a family. But Noah did not consult with his family. He just did what God told him to do. Can I tell you something? When God gives you an assignment, don't leave it in your head. Send it to your feet. When God gives you an assignment, don't leave it in your head. Send it to your feet. Because watch me, when you leave it in your head, you give the opportunity for doubt to have a conversation with your vision. Because here's the difficult thing about preparation. Vision and doubt live in the same place. Let me repeat it. Your vision and doubt live in the same place. And watch me. The act of lingering in doubt for a long period of time is procrastination. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, here we go. Here we go. Some of us in this room, we are not walking in what God called us to walk in, not because you're not graced for it, not because you're not anointed, but because you're a procrastinator. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. Listen to me. Procrastination is an abuse of God's grace. Yes. Because even though God has graced you for a tomorrow, it should fuel you to get it done today. Because watch me, while I can appreciate my tomorrow, there are certain things that God wants to develop in you now. And sometimes, listen to me, when God will give you an assignment, he needs you to move quickly. Sometimes you don't have all day to move on. Sometimes you got to obey quickly. And watch me, I love this because Noah, he did it immediately. What if, stay with me, what if preparation is a form of God's love, but we respond in procrastination out of our own insecurity? Because think about it this way. 
Oftentimes, a lot of us procrastinate. We procrastinate instead of prepare because we don't want to feel possibly the weight of disappointment if you put all this effort into a thing and it don't give you the results that you want. So if I put all this effort, if I put all this study, if I put all this time, Alana, and it don't work, then I'm going to feel disappointed. So rather than tapping into it and dealing with what might come, you deal with procrastination and you just let it go. I came to tell you that your job is to prepare and the results is God's business. Yeah. Listen to me. We get so caught up in the results when God is saying, if you would just listen to me, if you listen and do what I'm asking you to do, because watch me, more than the results, God is developing you. More than what you're believing him for, God is developing you. Life is more about the journey than it is the trophy. But, but we're so trophy focused that we forget about the journey. So watch me. So the Bible says that Noah did everything according to the Lord. And I love this because watch me. Not only was Noah a preparer, he was also a preacher. The Bible says in 2 Peter, watch me, the Bible says in 2 Peter, the Bible calls Noah a preacher of righteousness. So I need you to envision this. So not only was Noah preparing a boat, but he was also preaching to the people. Stay with me, y'all. I need you to get this. Do you know how silly Noah looked preparing people, preparing a boat and preaching to people at the same time? And watch me. Noah, he only had one sermon. It's going to rain. Jesus didn't die yet. What else he going to preach? That's the only thing he can say. It's going to rain. Year after year after year, it's going to rain. You know, now listen. Now listen. Now I'm pretty sure the people was listening to him on day one. But by day 15... I know, listen, imagine if Twitter was around back then, or X, or, or Instagram, or, or TikTok. Can you imagine the reels that would have been created? Hey, it's been a year, and this fool's still building this boat. Now watch me. Five years later, because, because, because most people believe that it took about 600 years. It was some crazy number. It was about 600 years. Isn't that right? Or some, some huge number. It was some wild number. I'll give you more detail later on that. I'll come back and tell you next week. But it was like a whole bunch of years. It was like over 100 years. Years upon years upon years. Can you imagine that people's children's children, what they phone? Hey, this fool still building the book. But the whole time, his sermon didn't change. It's going to rain. It's going to rain because watch me. Listen to me. Some of us get easily discouraged because you have been proclaiming a thing to people and it still ain't happened yet. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. You told your girlfriends at your vision party that you was going to be married by, by the summer of 2023 and it still ain't happened yet. You, you told your boss, listen, I, I'm just coming in here to let you know at the beginning of the year, I'll be going in three months and you're still there. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But, 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 I, but I came to tell you this. I came to tell you that just because life hasn't changed yet don't mean your sermon changed. Listen to me. You got to preach yourself into the place God is calling you to be. I don't know about you, but you need to start waking up every morning saying it's still going to rain. I know you ain't seen no change in your account, but it's still going to rain. I know you might still be single, but it's still going to rain. I know things might not have changed in your life, but it's still going to rain. I don't care how many people show up believe, it's still going to rain. I don't And then 
and watch me, y'all. The Bible says, the Bible says, in, in, in verse, in Genesis 7, the Bible says, and he gives them all this instruction. The Bible says in Genesis 7, verse 16, so those that entered, male and female, of all flesh, went in as God commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. Oh, wait a minute. That, that thing stood out to me because I thought Noah just, you know, okay, the rain coming. I'm going to close the boat. But watch me. But if God told him to build it, then it was God who would have to shut him in because only God could have let him out. Some of us are frustrated because you are wondering when God is going to open the door and when he's going to close it. But I came to tell you today, I came to tell you today to not get frustrated when the doors you want closed are still open. And don't get frustrated when the doors that are closed, you want them open. Or when the doors that are open, you want them closed. Don't get frustrated. That just means that there's more development that needs to take place. And watch me. And if God has kept you before, don't you think he's going to keep you now? And when he shuts you into a thing, can't nobody come into it. And then when he opens the door to a thing, the things that's supposed to come out of it is going to come out of it. But, 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 but. The, the thing about it is the reason why I believe Noah was able to be shut in was because he prepared well. Because think about it. I want you to imagine, Garrett, I want you to imagine if Noah skipped one step on this boat. Then watch me. If he misses one step, then the flood that was meant for others, he would have experienced it himself. So you have to prepare well because the thing that you're preparing for, you're eventually going to have to live in it. Okay, let me, let me, let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. Okay. So there's this book. There's this book. For those of you who are on Audible and all these different platforms, listen to me. I need you to download this book today when you go home. It's called Chop Wood, Carry Water. Chop Wood, Carry Water. It's a very simple book. Ain't nothing difficult about it. There's a story in the book. It's about this Japanese architect. This Japanese architect, y'all, he built beautiful homes all over Japan. I mean gorgeous homes. I'm talking about homes that had the marble floors, that had the antique seats, that had all these different things. I mean gorgeous, like top tier. Like whatever you're thinking about, think, think bigger than that. I mean top tier. But he built homes all over Japan. People loved him. He built a reputation. But watch me. But one day he got tired. He got frustrated. Because he had been building and building and building and building and building and building and building. And now he's tired. So Rasan, he goes to his boss one day and he says, listen, I worked with you for so long. Now I'm tired. I'm ready to retire. So his boss says, OK, all right. But, but, but then his boss says, listen, I need you to build one more house. I need you to build one more house. And watch me. He says reluctantly, all right, I'm going to do it because I'm, I'm ready to get out of here. So watch me, Rasan. What he does is he builds the house. But he doesn't use his normal techniques because he's frustrated. He doesn't put in the marble floors. He put in some nice floors, but it ain't the floors like everybody else. He put in the, the, the sink and the counter, but it ain't like everybody else because he's tired, because he's frustrated in the cold. He just wants to get the assignment over. So he just does it and he goes back to his boss and he says, I'm done. I did it. But the boss says, wait a minute, one more thing. He turns around and says, what? He takes out of his pocket the keys. It says the house that you just built is yours. I came to tell you today that the reason why you have to prepare well is because you have to live in the thing that you have prepared. Whatever house you are building, you got to live in it. And I need to tell you today, I don't know what type of house you want to live in, but I want to live in a space that's been prepared by the Lord. I want to live in a space that's been prepared well. 